three mischievous friends find their new flatmate lifeless with a suitcase full of cash, so they commit the unthinkable to satisfy their selfish greed. In Edinburgh, Cameron rings a shared flat to apply for a room. The three owners of the wide and well-lit apartment, David Stephens, Juliet Miller, and Alex Law, sit across from the ingenuous man for an interview. Not long after, Alex, the smug journalist, blatantly patronizes Cameron for his lack of charisma. So David, an accountant, ushers him out, laughing with his friends. Later, the mischievous trio interview more applicants whom they collectively rejected to be their flatmate while making fun of their expense. After defeating David in a tennis match, Alex berates him, so Juliet resolutely bests her arrogant friend in the following duel to humble him. On their way home, David laughs at his friend for losing against Juliet in tennis, when Alex accuses the two of having an intimate affair. Irritated, Juliet advises him to look for someone eligible to be their flatmate. Alex suggests using Juliet's beautiful friend, but the woman claims her friend hated him passionately. Sometime later, Juliet welcomes a man named Hugo, who's applying for a room in their apartment. The woman shows him around and learns that he's a traveling writer. While getting acquainted in the living room, the telephone rings, but Juliet asks Hugo to answer it. Just as the woman asks, the breezy writer takes the call and claims that Juliet is not around. Afterward, Hugo says that an upset man named Brian is looking for her. The phone rings again, but Juliet refuses to answer it, knowing the persistent man is aware she's avoiding him. Juliet reveals she's a doctor on the night shift, joking that Brian needs treatment. The introspective novelist sympathizes with her suitor's troubled condition, claiming he's on a self-searching agenda himself. Beguiled by the wise man, Juliet persuades Alex to accept Hugo as their flatmate, and she enters the bathroom. Then, the telephone rings, and Alex answers to an unknown Swedish man. Afterward, the busy accountant emerges from his room and snatches his mother's mail from Alex before leaving. Then, Alex reads and teases Juliet with the intense love letters she has been receiving. Over dinner with Hugo, the trio reveals their decision to accept him as their fourth flatmate. The intoxicated journalist questions if the novelist can afford rent in their flat. Hugo surprises Alex by showing him a wad of cash. Then, David asks their new roommate if he has ever killed a man, so Hugo assures him he hasn't. The following day, Hugo quietly enters the apartment and into his room with his stuff, careful not to wake the others. While Alex is watching TV, Juliet asks him if he's seen Hugo, which the journalist and the accountant deny. The woman wonders why the novelist's blue car is still outside their building, so the two men check it out to no avail. Then, Alex peeks into Hugo's transom window with the help of David, but he can't see him either. Juliet notices the room key is on the other side, so the three force the door open. Inside the room, the three friends find their new flatmate bare and lifeless on his bed. To relieve the foul smell, Alex opens the window and closes the blinds. He then rummages through Hugo's stuff and finds a stash of drugs, insinuating that the dead man overdosed. Distressed, Juliet exits the room and phones for an ambulance. Suddenly, Alex finds a suitcase beneath the bed filled with cash, so the woman drops the call. While contemplating what to do with the money, David and Juliet immediately decline Alex's disreputable plan to take the cash for themselves. However, the devious journalist challenges his friends to surrender the money, which they all find absurd as they laugh. Days after, the trio leaves the corpse untouched while they proceed in their daily lives. When David returns from work, he finds his friends refusing to call the police, since they still hesitate to surrender the money. At work, the accountant's boss calls David boring and entrusts him with a new client. In the office, David realizes his mundane life and envisions agreeing with Juliet about their wicked plan. Soon after, Alex leads on disposing of Hugo, saying they should dismember the corpse to make him unidentifiable before burying him in the forest. The trio shop for hardware when David insists he won't be able to cut a corpse. That night, Juliet also reveals that she won't be able to sever a body despite being a doctor, infuriating Alex. After covering up Hugo's body, the three struggle to carry the corpse downstairs, where Juliet drops her flashlight. Unbeknownst to David, Alex, and Juliet, two vicious men, Andy and Tim, torment a man elsewhere as they force him to tell them about Hugo's whereabouts, costing his life. When the trio successfully loads Hugo in their truck, Alex suggests they draw lots to choose who will dismember the body. Juliet agrees, but David remains hesitant. Then, the three enter the forest, where they'll bury the corpse. They decide on who will sever the body with a draw lot of three straws, and whoever picks the shortest must do it. Ultimately, David pulls the shortest, but insists he can't do it. Nevertheless, David starts dismembering the corpse in the grave hole they dug, while retching at the atrocious task. 
The following day, the traumatized accountant declines Juliet's offer for help while Alex watches TV. Afterward, David climbs the attic to hide the suitcase filled with money. As Juliet enters work, she sneaks the bag filled with Hugo's dismembered parts into the cart filled with packages to be incinerated. Meanwhile, Alex burns Hugo's remaining stuff and pushes his car deep into a desolate lake. To celebrate their scheme, the trio dines in a luxurious restaurant that raises funds for sick children. Then, Alex and Juliet dance excitedly, making Alex fall on the floor while his partner steps on him seductively. Elsewhere, Andy and Tim pull out their victim from a freezer and interrogate him about Hugo's whereabouts. When the man fails to talk due to the extreme cold, the pair pushes him back and traps him until he perishes. In the restaurant, David wants to talk to his friends about something, but Alex insists he forgets his worries and drinks the love and happiness. Then, the arrogant man sees Cameron waiting tables and calls him over. When the smiling man approaches, Alex immediately dismisses him and laughs. Suddenly, Juliet's co-worker, Brian, greets the woman and invites her to dance. However, David confronts Brian and lashes at him for interrupting and asking his supposed girlfriend for a dance. When Brian leaves, Juliet and Alex blatantly admire their friend's sudden toughness. Afterward, Alex takes a leak in the bathroom when Cameron, backed with his friends, punches him. The following day, the doctor helps her friend cure his wounds from last night's brawl with Cameron, while the accountant leaves for work. Then, the telephone rings, but Juliet answers to nothingness from the other line. Seeing the wounded, irritable journalist, Juliet suggests they spend Hugo's money to feel better. Moments later, the chaotic pair heartily watches a videotape they recorded while enjoying the random stuff they bought with the stolen money. As David finds his euphoric friends in their thrashed apartment, he unplugs the TV and demands to know how much the video camera costs. The accountant is bewildered upon knowing the pair paid £500 for it, aside from their careless spending. Meanwhile, Hugo's pursuers near the end of their search as they find his car abandoned in the lake. That night, David wakes from a noise and finds police investigating a burglary in the apartment downstairs. Soon after, Juliet and Alex notice their anxious friend's lack of appetite, assuming he's mad at them for spending Hugo's money for fun. The pair urges him to spend some time to relieve himself, but the accountant insists they should secure it in a bank. Alex fervently resents not using the money immediately after all they've been through. Numbly, David invalidates his friend, claiming none of them dismembered a corpse as he did. Afterward, Alex hears David's footsteps in the attic, where the accountant secures the suitcase in a water-filled trunk. At Juliet's workplace, Alex asks his friend to use her influence and lure David out of the attic. However, the woman is concerned about where they'll put the money when they get him out. Adamant about securing the money, David puts a lock on the attic and takes a leave from work as his paranoia bests him. Unsettled by their current arrangement, Alex and Juliet chat awkwardly over dinner when someone rings the door. The pair aren't expecting anyone, so the irritated journalist marches to open it. Suddenly, Hugo's pursuers barge inside and subdue Alex and Juliet. Hearing the commotion downstairs, David quietly slips the key into his door as he realizes a plan. Then, Andy hits Alex's legs with a crowbar, making the victim scream and reveal that the money is in the attic. Unbeknownst to them, David expects the trespassers with a hammer and kills them with it. When the deranged accountant drops the bodies from the attic, he jumps down and examines a tattoo on Tim's neck. Not long after, the trio silently drives into the forest, where David dismembers Andy and Tim's corpses and buries them himself. Soon, Juliet visits a flight agency and avails plane tickets to Rio de Janeiro to escape their troubled lives. Later, Alex watches TV while resting his wounded legs, but notices David drilling multiple holes in the ceiling to watch his friends downstairs. That night outside the building, Alex refuses Juliet's proposition to retrieve the money from the attic, terrified of their savage friend. However, Juliet flatters him and calls him smart, making him rethink his decision. While David reads through their mails, the door rings and he sees Inspector McCall and his assistant Inspector Mitchell. The officers are investigating the recent burglary downstairs and aim to find possible witnesses. During the interview, McCall asks if the other three flatmates witnessed anything about the incident, but David claims there are only two others. Surprised, the inspectors take note while David constantly asks from whom they got the false information. McCall then emphasizes that Mitchell is a brilliant trainee, troubling the accountant. To execute their plan, Juliet gives Alex the key to the attic, which she stole from David. When Alex climbs upstairs, he finds the accountant nowhere while David silences Juliet downstairs. 
Concurrently, Alex finds the suitcase submerged in the old trunk. When he gets down, David points a drill to his forehead while Alex hides his wet hands. Just in time, Juliet interrupts, saying the journalist doesn't know about the police, whom David believes he called. The following day, David watches Alex's every move through the attic's holes until he leaves. Then, the deranged accountant spies on Juliet, stopping himself from watching her unclothed until he hears her leave. As David makes a meal in the kitchen, he finds Juliet crouched in the corner, unwilling to go to work with her bruised face. He apologizes for his roughness, saying they should mend their relationship and start anew. In Alex's work, he writes a testament in the event of his death where he discloses everything about their crime. Then, his editor calls for him and sends him to cover a bizarre case about three mutilated bodies. Shortly after, Alex drives to the crime scene in the forest while Inspector Mitchell eyes him suspiciously. Then, an officer addresses the media in a shuttle, revealing they couldn't identify the dismembered corpses excavated yesterday. Tormented, Alex leaves in the middle of the press gathering, which alerts Inspector McCall. When Alex returns to the apartment, he finds David and Juliet in the living room and shows them the newspapers about the crime. Apparently, the couple already knows about the news from the television. Distressed, David blames Alex for not digging the grave deeper but the journalist insists no one could link the killings to them anyway. That night, Alex awakens from a nightmare and finds Juliet on his bed, who leaves the word love on his bedside. The following day, Juliet sits across from the inspectors and claims she doesn't recognize the three pictures of felons Hugo, Tim, and Andy. However, Juliet mindlessly agrees that she recognizes her patients through their illnesses and McCall compares her to a criminal who remembers their crime. Shortly after, Alex claims he doesn't recognize the three either. McCall then asks if he'd be surprised if he learned that Tim and Andy's car is still parked outside the building. Taken aback, Alex says yes, raising suspicion towards the anxious journalist. After the interrogation, McCall hands him the police's number if he's willing to tell them something. That night, David and Juliet believe the officers know they committed the crime, but Alex insists nothing could link the killings to them except for the money. In the middle of the night, Alex wakes up and silently takes the telephone to his room to call Inspector McCall. Concurrently, David awakens beside Juliet in the attic and quietly takes the suitcase downstairs. He packs his stuff and heads to the door until his girlfriend sees him. Unfortunately, McCall fails to receive Alex's call and the journalist hears Juliet persuading David to escape together. Knowing Alex is calling someone, David calls him over and pulls the telephone cord. Helplessly, Alex emerges from his room, so David says they're leaving without him. The deranged accountant mockingly says he doesn't want to end their friendship on a bad note. But the terrified journalist claims it's fine, eyeing an immobile Juliet by the door. Alex asks where they would would go to send their mails. In response, David reveals a plane ticket to Rio de Janeiro, accusing Juliet of conspiring against him to escape. Exposed, Juliet refutes her lover's accusations and Alex claims he's the one who bought it, along with another for himself. The betrayed accountant believes Alex's lie, thinking his friends are better together. Then, Juliet blocks the door to stop David from leaving, but he strikes her. Alex attacks him while the woman drags the suitcase into the kitchen. Overpowering Alex, David snatches the case from Juliet and hits his friend on his wound legs. The woman then strikes her lover with a toaster and bites him as they pin him on the table. As David overpowers the two, he grabs a knife and impales Alex on the shoulder. When the murderous accountant takes a second knife, Juliet stabs him in the throat, making him fall to the floor beside Alex. Instead of helping the journalist, the woman pushes and hits the impaled knife further to prevent him from following her as she leaves to take the money for herself. Soon after, the police investigate the crime scene in the apartment, while Alex smilingly greets Inspector McCall. Meanwhile, Juliet thrashes in her car beside a suitcase filled with newspaper cutouts with a singular 50-pound note. On the other hand, Alex remains smiling, knowing that none of his flatmates had gotten hold of the money, which he hid beneath the kitchen floorboards. Nevertheless, Juliet takes her paid ticket to Rio de Janeiro, escaping alone. At the same time, David's corpse enters the mortuary chamber as their friendship turns to a horrific end. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.